Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again. John Wise here. Shannon and I are going to share this review of the DC Universe Classics DC Comics 75 Years Superpowers Green Lantern's Light 5-Pack. Uh, so this was available a few years ago um, during DC's 75th anniversary. And uh, this was a Walmart exclusive, as you can tell here by the sticker. And this was an awesome pack. Uh, because this gave us some figures that we didn't have yet in the uh, DC Universe Classics line. It gave us Tumar Re, it gave us a Green Lantern version of Sinestro, which I believe at the time we only had the black and yellow, or the uh, purple and yellow uh, costumed version. Uh, of course we had a reprint of the uh, Hal Jordan uh, figure that we already had, such as this one here. The only difference is between this one and this one in the five pack, however, as you'll see, has the white streaks in the hair. So that was just before he became Parallax, which is really cool. We also have a John Stewart. Uh, that's uh, in his uh, alternate costume there. And of course, fan favorite, Guy Gardner. So this is where Shannon's going to go ahead and take over and... Alright guys, so, please forgive the shrewdness of this portion of the video. I'll be reviewing the packaging pretty much via photos since John didn't really go over that. I received my 5-pack from my brother-in-law and sister-in-law a few years ago for Christmas. And I have to say that I spent quite a while just examining the packaging before I even opened it up. Of course, the DC Universe Classics toy line was completely sculpted by Four Horsemen Studios and produced by Mattel. They were first available in 2008 and this one as John said was a Walmart exclusive so let's go ahead and go over the packaging shall we I really like the backdrop that Mattel used for this five pack very Green Lantern-esque the style in which they pose these guys in the packaging is very iconic with Hal Jordan posing as if he's charging from his power battery and the other four Green Lanterns looking as if they're flying in different poses each of which posed directly next to their power battery on the left side you see a nice little collage of different DC Universe characters posing in green light. Superman at the top, Joker and Wonder Woman, Sinestro, Flash, Cyborg, Darkseid, Jade, Catwoman, Ultra Humanite, Martian Manhunter, Hank Henshaw the Cyborg, Superman, and Blue Beetle. Then down below we see that it was produced by Mattel and that some pieces may be choking hazard. On the right hand side we have more DC Universe characters in Green Lantern's light. Batman at the top, Lex Luthor, Hal Jordan, Giganta, Firestorm. I'm not entirely sure who that is with the beard, but then we have Vixen, Dead Man, The Question, Spectre, Zatanna, another character I can't really tell, and then finally Two-Face, with of course the Mattel logo in the lower corner. As we move on to the back, we see each figure posing next to a Green Lantern comic book with their own bios down below each. DC Universe logo at the top followed immediately by the Green Lantern Oath. In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power. Green Lantern's light! So on the left hand side we have John Stewart standing next to an issue of the Green Lantern Corpse comic book. The issue shown is said to be the 1986 collector's item premiere issue of the Green Lantern Corpse. But it's actually Green Lantern Volume 2, number 201, with story by Steve Englehart. I do have this issue in my personal collection, so if you would like me to do a comic book review on it at some point, then please let me know in the comments below. For the sake of timing, I'm going to refrain from reading the uh, bios for each character and just move right along to the next one. Below John, 
we have Guy Gardner, who is also presented next to an issue of the Green Lantern comics, which is yet another one that I have in my personal collection. From February 1986, Green Lantern, Volume 2, number 197. The explosive confrontation you demanded, Green Lantern versus Green Lantern. As you can see, we have Guy Gardner and John Stewart at odds, about ready to fight with a depowered Hal Jordan between them, saying, Uh, guys, maybe we could talk this over. And once again, if you'd like to see a review of that issue, or any others presented on here in the future, let me know in the comments below. Moving across, we have Green Lantern Sinestro standing next to a copy of Green Lantern Emerald Dawn number 6, written by Keith Giffen and Gerard Jones, which retold the origin of Hal Jordan as the Green Lantern for the new continuity established by Crisis on Infinite Earths. Unfortunately, I actually don't have this issue, but I do plan on buying it in the future. So if you want me to review that six-part story and compare it to the original Silver Age story, then leave me a comment below and I'll fast track that. Moving on up, we have Tomar Ray next to a copy of Green Lantern, Sinestro Corps, Secret Files and Origins, number one. And then in the center, Hal Jordan next to a copy of Green Lantern, volume three, number one, from June 1990, which apparently is the return of Hal Jordan as a Green Lantern after being away from the Corps for an extended period of time. And he's joined on the cover by Guy Gardner and John Stewart. This issue was written by Gerard Jones. So now, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at the figures inside. As you can see here, it comes with Tomar Ray, Sinestro, Hal Jordan, John Stewart, and Guy Gardner. Now, these guys all pretty much have the same sculpt, with the exception of their heads and Guy Gardner. Guy, his arms and legs are pretty much the same sculpt, but as you'll notice, he is a little bit taller. And he's got this uh, rubbery plastic vest going on. Alright guys, honestly, they could have taken a little bit more time on this sculpt of Guy Gardner. Uh, the body is fine, in my opinion. The only thing that even remotely makes it look like Guy is the hairstyle. Um, they just, they kind of made his face too square and blockish. Um, his chin kind of protrudes protruding out he actually looks more like Willem Dafoe than Guy Gardner uh, the vest is kind of a rubbery plastic very similar to many of the old school capes that we got from the uh, Superman and Batman lines of the late 90s it looks like they may have just uh, slid it over the plastic body before they put the arms on. It's not glued in place. Doesn't appear to be. And I don't think... No. You can't really take it off either. Unless you want to remove the figure's arms. And maybe risk tearing it. It is just a plain black. Plain black underneath. Um, it is not the same torso sculpt as the other ones. Considering Guy's uh, neck piece has more of a uh, sailor's turtleneck style going for it. Uh, the paint job is pretty good. I would say that the forest green shade does go well with Guy Gardner. Um, I like the little white stripe he's got going down the side and the stud, the silver colored studs and buckle on his jacket. Um, <clears throat> his head is on kind of a ball joint, can look up slightly down about that far turn all the way around uh, the collar does not hinder it at all uh, his arms can go up to about there down up about there back down single joint at the elbow uh, shoulder swivel 
then you got the wrist swivel. Uh, waist, can't turn all the way around. Legs, can go up that far, back that far. Knee, single joint, thigh swivel. Can go out, do the little split motion. And you got an ankle rocker. No side tilt, um, just forward and backward. And Guy Gardner, like the others, did come with. Let's see if I can get a power battery. Now, just like in the previous review, this power this power battery is solid on the inside. No lens or anything like that. Um, still very nice. And I'm glad they changed the color to be more of a uh, metallic green for this one. As opposed to the lime green of the uh, Hal Jordan Avon Sur power battery. Now let's go ahead and take a look at John Stewart. Alright guys, here we are John with John Stewart. Uh, this is one of his, I think his second... Uh, design for his uh, uniform. It's got the thin green, uh, the lan massive lantern symbol in the middle, the white around the edges. Very reminiscent of Parallax. And then it comes down very narrowly down the abs into the trunks. Now with this John Stewart, since they were going this route with the figure, um, I don't think they should have gave him the uh, military style cut since this is obviously the 1970s and uh, maybe early 80s version of the costume uh, I think they should have really gave him the short afro that he had while during the time that he wore this costume uh, I could be mistaken. In fact, let me check on that real quick. Alright guys, so I wasn't really able to find this exact costume. I was able to find one similar to it from Green Lantern Corps of the 1970s. However, it had the smaller Green Lantern symbol in the center. But it was narrow just like this. Um, but in that one, he did have the short afro rather than the military cut. But overall, not bad. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. I really think they should have taken that extra step and given him the uh, bright green eyes. Like uh, the Jon Stewart from uh, the animated series. But still not bad. Uh, he does have the same articulation as Guy Gardner. His head is a little stiffer though. It doesn't seem to go up or down as much as Guy Gardner's did. And it does turn all the way around. Uh, it probably doesn't help though that... These have been sitting in a box because I have nowhere to display them right now. Um, so that could have stiffened up the uh, articulation. But his arm does go up to there. Turn around, goes all the way above his head. He does have bicep swivel. A single elbow joint. Wrist articulation. Ab crunch waist swivel which actually not sure if I uh, yeah Guy Gardner does have the uh, ab crunch as well it's just not as articulating because of the vest uh, waist swivel leg go up out to there go for, up to there back to there Thigh swivel, single knee joint, and ankle rocker. And the detail on his ring, very nice. Uh, this is another figure. I don't mind that they did the forest green look for him. Uh, for this costume. Now, 
if it were one of the newer costumes for Jon Stewart, I would have liked to see more of an emerald green, uh, slime green style look or paint job. But that one's not bad. And it comes with the exact same lantern as Guy Gardner. Uh, in fact, since we took a look at his ring, let's take a look at Guy's ring. And his ring, if you notice, it's not very well designed. It just kind of looks like a paint blob, really. So let's move him out of the way, and then we'll take a look at Sinestro. All right, guys, so here we have Sinestro. As you can see, he comes with the exact same power battery as the others. So we'll go ahead and get that out of the way. Um can see his widow peak here they did a pretty good job with that even though it is slightly crooked uh, the mustache they really should have painted a thinner style mustache on him uh, because even in the 70s 80s he still had a very slim mustache almost a french mustache really and his head his forehead is bigger um, than the others, really. And, ooh. Um, and that's to be expected because that's how he was in the comic. And the paint job on his face, very nice. He does have the bright green eyes that I wish they would have done on Jon Stewart. He does have all the exact same articulation as the other one, so I'm going to refrain from going over that. But I would like, would have liked to see him maybe in a, possibly a brighter costume, not exactly emerald or slime green, um, but not as dark and muted as forest green either. Maybe like a happy medium in between there. I think that would have looked really good on this Sinestro. And now we'll take a look at Tomar Ray. Again, power battery, exact same. Oh, forgot. I keep forgetting. Why don't you guys keep reminding me? We have Sinestro's power ring. It is slightly better than Jon Stewart's. Or, I mean, Guy Gardner's. Uh, but not my, not by much. So before I get on, forget on this guy, let's take a look at his power ring. It's pretty much exactly the same. A little bit better detail, a little bit better paint job. Not bad. Uh, and again, he has the exact same articulation, exact same body sculpt, just different head. And his head does go up and down. It's stiff right now. Um, his fin here is made out of more of a uh, more pliable rubbery plastic. Which is really nice. Pointed ears. Nice color Green Lantern mask. Sorry guys, I got the windows open. Uh, I don't have a basement like other YouTubers do, so... <laughs> You're going to get some background noises. They could have maybe done his beak a different shade. Um, maybe a lighter shade of the skin tone. I think that would have looked a little bit better. Instead, it just the same paint job. I I understand they had to do it that way to keep prices down, but I think even adding just a little bit different shade, it wouldn't brought prices up that much. I mean, look, you got a slight darker shade here at the bottom of the fin. Overall, not a bad figure. They did change the uh, paint the inside of his mouth a darker shade kind of a maroonish and the detail they put into it on his fin it's very nice so there's tomar ray and now let's move on to the final figure in the set all right guys here we have hal jordan you will notice exact same articulation exact same body sculpt exact same battery uh, exact same power ring. The only thing different is the head. His head does rock up and down. Side to side, like the others. 
you can see he has the graying on his temples. Pre-parallax. Uh, however, I guess you could say he was infected by parallax at this time. It just hadn't made its presence known yet. Again, with this Hal Jordan, I would have liked to see maybe maybe the same style green as I wanted for Sinestro. Not as dark as this forest green, but also not as bright as emerald or slime green either. Just like a happy medium. This is a more veteran, more seasoned Hal Jordan. Um, he's slowly becoming parallax, you know. They would have just made him look a lot better if they did a slightly brighter green. Now let's go ahead and compare him with the Hal Jordan from the DC Universe Classics. Avin Sir Green Lantern 2 pack and you will see pretty much the same exact head sculpt except this Hal Jordan the sides of his hair are darkened um, also if you'll notice the skin tone on the face faces uh, this one's plain looking this one Actually, it looks more leathery, really. Shinier. And the different paint job. This was Hal's first costume. So it doesn't come over the uh, shoulders like this Hal does. Got the black outline to the, uh, lan uh, to the lantern symbol. This one, though I would have liked to see a brighter green done on him, I can understand why they would do the forest green because that was the shade of green that they used back then for him though i would have liked maybe just a little bit lighter shade all right guys here we are as you can see they their power batteries do fit rather nicely in their hands um, they can hold them without risk of them falling out overall i wasn't that impressed with this line uh, Guy Gardner would probably be the exception. I, I don't really like when toy lines use the exact same sculpt across the board on their action figures. Because they might as well just give us one figure with four different heads. Overall, I'd probably rank this maybe a 7 out of 10. Uh, and again, they look at how Guy Gardner just kind of towers over all the others. Um, I don't really care for that. It, it makes him it makes him look too hulkish, really. He should be about the same size as the others. He actually looks more like a classic, a, a classic cartoon villain in this toy line. Uh, not really impressed. On his own, he is an okay figure, but when he's lined up next to the other figures in the line, not really that great. So there you have it, guys. The DC Universe Classics, DC Comics, 75 years of superpower, Green Lantern's Light, Sinestro, Tomar Ray, Guy Gardner, Jon Stewart, and Hal Jordan. I'm Shannon for Comageddon TV. Take care. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you smash that subscribe button and click on the little bell to receive notifications on all our upcoming videos. Hit the like button, make sure and leave us a comment so we know how you felt about this video. And don't forget to share with your family and friends. Until next time, I'm Shannon for Comageddon, where all geek culture collides.